wonderful building. I was telling somebody, you know, you are, many of you are residents, some of you are not, maybe you're tourists or you're summer residents. And maybe if we didn't do these concerts, you wouldn't see some of the real jewels we have on the Iron Range. And these are fabulous places for little towns to have, and we're awfully lucky, and I'm glad we can use it. We have, a, as you know, the opera rehearsals are going on in, in Chisholm today and in Aurora tomorrow and finally culminating in the performances on the weekend. So they or the orchestra had a long rehearsal today, finished at 6.30, and everyone is so busy that the program is going to be kind of in a different order than you're seeing on your program because they just marched in the door. So today, it's because there are so many rehearsals going on for the orchestra, some of our quartets aren't quite ready to play and so on. And it occurred to me that the instruments you're going to hear tonight, the violin, which can play by itself, unaccompanied very well, the marimba, this wonderful instrument, is a solo instrument, can do everything by itself, the piano, of course, the guitar is another. So a lot of what you're hearing are for instruments that just one person could do everything. You can do the harmony, you can do the melody. And it'll be interesting in that sense. So we're starting tonight not with Tim Pinkerton, who will play second for us. We'll start with Ari Isomura, who is our percussionist in the orchestra. And she owns this fantastic instrument. And maybe, Ari, you can tell us something about it. Um, and this uh, this instrument is a marimba. It fits in my living room, like um, <laughs> thankfully. <laughs> um, yeah, and um, I brought it up here in my van. You can see the case is over there. It basically folds in half. It comes apart in seven parts, and it's a little heavy, but with you know you, that's why marimba players need friends. So always, um, we get our help. <laughs> and so this uh, instrument has. Um, uh, it's it's from the uh, the background is um, Honduran and Mexican Chiapas, and where they had um, multiple people per instrument, and then they would have multiple on, um, marimbas, and it would be a marimba ensemble, just like a piano is in every household. Marimbas are very common over there. So when they have traditional music and their the make is very different. Now this is um, a 19. Um, this this model is has been um, kept uh, keeping on changing over the decades, and um, this is more conventionalized to be integrated into concert music. And now there are a lot of composers that are writing for this instrument, and this and other classical instruments. So it's been really great to work with composers. So the piece you're going to hear tonight um, is a one movement out of 12, and it is called April. And you can tell why it's 12 movements. Um, it is one for every month. And it's a friend, um, the composer, um, she lives in Northfield, Minnesota. And her name is Asuka Kakitani. She's a Japanese-American composer, and she's a jazz composer. And she um, wrote this piece for um, percussion solo. And so I'm going to play for you April, and the subtitle is Slow But Coming. And the title of the piece is called 12 Months in Minnesota. Now, she moved here, and so you can tell in April, you know what's slow but coming. Yeah. Spring, right? <laughs> so, um, here is April. So, I hope you enjoy. Um, oh, well, maybe I'll try playing a little bit of the instrument sounds they have. Um, the low sounds, the high sounds. And then the high sounds are more with the harder mallets. It sounds more like a xylophone. So a lot of xylophone music can be played here too. Um, so yeah, uh, in, uh, I, I grew up playing piano. Um, so instead of using ten fingers on the keyboard, I'm using four sticks. Okay. <laughs> okay. So here is April. Thank you. 
It is a German dance. That's what it means. Alemania is a, the Italian word for, for Germany. So it's a German dance in 4-4 four, four time. And you have this idea. There's a pickup. So a little bit imitative and not terribly fast. So that's an Alemania. Then I noticed that further down on the program, Juanianis is going to be doing the first movement of the Isai Sonata. And usually an Aleman would not be the title for a sonata movement, because it's a Baroque dance and it's part of a keyboard suite or an orchestral suite. But Isai puts it in as an Aleman. So I thought it might be interesting to juxtapose those two things. So we're going to start with Timothy's Aleman, and then we'll jump down to Juanianis playing the Isai Sonata. Timothy Pinkerton.
Now we're going to stay in the Romantic period and here's some Chopin. Chopin, in my opinion, wrote his best music, as, as did most composers at the end of his very short life. You know, when we think about composers who are dying in their 30s, there were plenty of them, Gershwin and Chopin and Mendelssohn. And one thinks how much they accomplished in those very short number of years, and we always think, what would they have done? How would they have evolved? What would have happened 40 years later if they lived a normal lifespan? But in the case of Chopin, we have the, we hear the waltzes, they're okay, they're sweet, they're fun, but the great masterworks are already starting or are happening in these last opuses of Chopin, the opus 50s and the opus 60s, which is all we, we get from Chopin. So this is a great, great sonata, the third sonata of Chopin in B minor, and one of the masterpieces of the piano literature. It's going to be played by Eric Shan, who is probably 16, yes? No. 16 years old from Seattle, Washington, and he's going to do a wonderful job with that. Eric?
Isn't that fabulous music? <laughs> fabulous yeah. Next on the program, we have a duo, a violin duo, playing Telemann, who you know is a Baroque composer, and this is called a canonic sonata. Yes? Am I right? Sonata, not in general. Yes. A canon is like row, row, row your boat. You know, row, 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 row your boat. There you go. That's the idea. <laughs>
of all, they're in our orchestra, of course, and been playing in the opera orchestra and all kinds of other things. This is Choki Wo and Lu Li. And they are both DMAs from the University of Cincinnati, yes? Mm -hmm. Did you study with Sussman House? Yes. Yes, what great, one of the great teachers and, and all of this wonderful music shows. Thank you. is one of the legendary violists. He was a member of the uh, Fine Arts Quartet for many years and then uh, principal viola at the Israel Philharmonic for about 10 years. And we're so lucky that he likes to play. And he likes to play with our students and it's such a broadening experience for a young musician to work with somebody who's a war horse of the, of the profession. So here comes Yuri Gondelsman and Carlos Bedoya to play viola and guitar together. And while, while I tune a little bit, because the guitar gets out of tune the moment I walk in, in a different uh, climate. So while I tune, I'll tell you a little bit about Bastianas Brasileiras. Uh, Eitor Villalobos was a composer from Brazil, actually the most prolific uh, from South America. And it is not secret that he was obsessed with Bach. And he wrote a series of uh, works that were meant to incorporate the polyphony and the counterpoint of the Baroque period into Brazilian uh, typical and traditional music. So this is number five. The original score is for nine cellos in soprano, and this one was arranged for guitar and viola. So I hope you cellos. <laughs> <laughs>
extended work that's really based on an opera uh, of, by Bellini. But the composer of this piece is Franz Liszt, who liked to take large, large pieces like Beethoven symphonies and write piano versions of these kinds of things. So this is Liszt's idea of encapsulating all the, mo the most important themes and the most important ideas from this large opera. And it's about 17 or 18 minutes long, and it's going to be performed by somebody most of you know already, Hans Derek Hugh. This is his 10th year he's been in northern Minnesota with us. And now he's a big star. He's at Indiana. <laughs> now he's at Indiana University studying with the very great Arnaldo Cohen, who's also from Brazil, yes? And uh, they like him a lot at IU, and they should, because he's wonderful. So even though this is not a great sideway piano, I have no doubt he's going to make the best of it. Hans you.
never been in Hibbing High School, the auditorium. You'd be surprised how many people have. They know about it, but they've never been there. So this is a good opportunity to bring all of those people with you. And let's, we can't fill it up, that's all. Yes. But we can do a lot better. Thank you so much for coming tonight.